Hallo Carsten. Ja. Ja, hello Didier, guten Morgen alle Teilnehmer. Könnt ihr uns sagen, ob ihr ein Bild habt und nicht nur einen Ton? Ja, Ton und Bild gehen. Danke Zoran. Ähm, für alle meine deutschen Teilnehmer normalerweise, wir, wir wechseln jetzt gleich auf Englisch, weil Didier ist äh, eher äh, des Englischen mächtig. Er versteht Deutsch ganz gut, aber er traut sich noch nicht, es wirklich zu sprechen. So I switch to English. Welcome this morning to a webinar, or our uh, webinar Hyper-V Backups, Demos and Q&A. This is a follow-up webinar uh, to the webinar we did on the 10th of January, where uh, Didier mostly talked about um, all the great stuff in Hyper-V Backup. And he showed uh, a lot of things, and we want to demo that today. So we prepared a lot, and of course, these are live demos, so a lot of can go wrong. And um, now we say maybe something about uh, Didier. Didier, how are you doing? Good morning, Karsten. I'm doing just fine, and we finished prepping some nice demos, I think, and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing them with you all. Yes, so we, uh, with no further ado, we should start. And who didn't know us, we together are the Hyper-V Amigos. And we do usually recorded showcasts, so not live webinars. And if you are interested in our stuff, go to hyper-v-amigos.net. But this is enough now. Just drive into the demos. Yeah. Okay, so... First of all, we are going to do a demo of a bare metal restore, but because that takes some time to set up, we are actually going to uh, reboot the host and boot into the recovery ISO that we created yeah. with, the, with the Veeam backup agent for Windows. So we get this running while we are talking about the other stuff. So we do a uh, software shutdown here, right? Um, yes. Because just to add this is one of uh, four node storage spaces direct cluster most of our demos are running in this four node storage spaces direct cluster and i think we are very bold to shut down one of the nodes and do a bare metal recovery so uh <laughs> press your yeah. thumbs that we uh <laughs> that it will work okay dj yeah. um so this will is take a while just shutting yeah. down we might have reset it better that would have been yeah and we just uh no not reset it come on um <laughs> we have to look if the virtual media is still connected otherwise we can't let's, boot. let's hope so let's take a look your session has expired due to inactivity oh, that's oh not i may i maybe have to, to log yeah, in. May, maybe we have a little problem here yeah. let's see if you're fast enough you're you're, you're golden so this Maybe is live. <laughs> That's what happens when you do things live. <laughs> yeah, so, we go. So set up the virtual media, please. The problem we have is we have some mess up with the keyboards. So we have yeah. the recovery media. We mount it. Oh, that's not good. Virtual media device one on, on Pro says already exists in an uh, effective connection from others okay we can always do another yes. yes try another so to explain this uh, we use veeam backup uh, and recovery version 10 um, the release candidate um, we heard uh, veeam backup and replication is coming out the final version very soon as of today um, but we still have the release candidate and uh, um, normally you protect with Veeam, of course, your virtual machines, but we want also to protect the host, so the S2D host with the installation. And you can create a bare metal recovery image, and we did that in advance, because then we don't lose too much time. I think so we're this is still Windows, right? Yes. Oh yeah, of course we logged out. Yeah. So please again, Carsten. That's live. So and I can already, if you have the console, I can restart the host myself. Okay. okay. I will. I will restart the host. Okay. Good. To, and then we have to press the right key to get into the ISO. I hope at least. Yeah. Do you want to show it or? No. I can't connect in the moment. Okay. okay, you have to do it. Okay, so let's go to virtual media. We have our virtual launch. Yeah, that's good. 
do not close this. Yeah. No. Okay. And then, where are we here? Remote con remote, remote control. control. I take yes. over. I know yeah. this machine's a bit better. We go to HTML5. Oh yes, there it is. So it's still reset it. You, you're going to reboot it anyway. You're going to restore it anyway. So reboot it. Oh, it's okay. Fine. Do that. Don't Just reboot it. What is with power control here? Can you click it? I will try and click it for you. No, I can't. That's weird. Okay, let's kill this. Why is uh, it always reconnecting? Because it's I... live, Carson. And that's <laughs> so it's not working now. I will pull the plugs at the server. They are not too far away from me. Because it's live. Don't worry about it. Stay in the console. If it's not why is this always reconnecting? Please go there. No, it doesn't. So this is, I think, power still on. the Windows. It's, it's, it's power okay, on. It's, it's off. It's I off. think we have some caching going on. So let's power it on. Yeah. And you will hit the right boot key at the right yeah. moment, right? I will. And then we can start talking about the rest of the... Uh, yeah, do you demos. think we have still the media connected? Uh, I think so, but I will check for you. You still have time. Yeah, it oh. is. Okay. Yeah, so you, no, no, it is not. I don't okay. see one. Okay, connect one, please. Because you not ask so nicely, I will do that for you. Uh, it already has one, it says, so probably you have, but... You know, for good measure, you get a couple, right? <laughs> mounted, please. Okay, so you have one okay. mounted. Okay, okay, switch back to the screen. <laughs> Sorry for this. We we prepared it, but of okay. course, there is always a timeout. Are you here? You see it? You, yes, you have eyes on this one? Okay, so I go to the Veeam. No, I can't have eyes on this one if you move to another screen, my friend. <laughs> yeah, but can't you connect to it <laughs> via a different path, please, right? <laughs> no, we just have to wait for the F2. Okay, so maybe okay. we, we talk a bit while I look at this, we talk a bit what we want to do with you. as an, Okay, uh, after after this bare metal restore, which is uh, obviously the, the fun, hit no, F6, F6, Carson, F6, hit F6, hit why F6. Why me? Okay. <laughs> Because I'm talking. <laughs> okay, so we'll also talk about, we'll do a demo of backup of a virtual machine, a SQL Server VM, a file server VM, just to show you the recovery checkpoint and the fact that you are no longer leveraging host level VSS uh, snapshots in Windows Server 2016, 2019. Hit enter. I do, I do, I do. Okay, okay, <laughs> just saying. Uh, we will also look at uh, backing up a VHD set uh, guest cluster. So we've created uh, guest clusters to do that with. They are general purpose file servers because CSVs are not supported with VHD sets uh, host level backups. And we will show you the scripts that you need to run to set it up properly so you don't have bad experiences whilst uh, running guest cluster host level backups. Uh, we'll also sh share the script that you need to fix the shared storage part if you have to change that because that's not supported uh, natively. And we will then dive into uh, instant recovery and give you some options you have with V10 to backup file shares. If you don't trust guest cluster uh, host level backups enough, now in V10 you can do file share backups and that's quite funky. And we'll show you a couple of more things around uh, uh, V10 uh, and around some things we're testing like offloading to a cloud provider. Uh, we're trying to use Wasabi for that. We have a virtual tape library from Starwind uh, around. So there might be follow-up webinars and Hyper-V Amigo showcast to show all that good stuff. And this is still RC1 because even when Gustav uh, announced V10 yesterday evening, late, uh, the bits haven't reached us yet and we didn't have time to upgrade or reinstall the, the V10 release candidate to production. Yeah, so, I think anyway. this machine is okay. Um, it's I think it's booting from the ISO and we have some... It takes a while to enumerate all the devices in there, so we know that already. This is why we started with the the boot from ISO and we go now to the uh, Veeam 
uh, server that we can talk a little bit about okay. the setup of um, of a backup or of the backup of the host itself. Yeah, so what you need to do in, in Veeam is in inventory, you have this what they call physical infrastructure. And what you can do there is you can add protection groups. And protection groups can be defined by Active Directory or manually. And as you can see, we've added a couple of clusters here actually to be protected. It doesn't, doesn't have to be a cluster, it could be standalone host, member servers. Uh, but these are based on the objects you find in Active Directory. And if you look at one, all the nodes of our Tarot cluster are here. We've created backups of those, and we are actually going to restore this one bare metal. Uh, if you look at the backup jobs, you will see this is the backup job with the Windows agent for that cluster. And these have been su successfully backed up. And that is what Karsten will connect to, uh, the backup in the Veeam repository uh when he has his uh, recovery console launched to initiate the bare metal recovery so basically that's what you do it's a nice option to have uh if you still have let's say uh physical servers around large file servers domain controllers some machines that you want to be able to restore without having to redeploy them uh, i know redeploying and the automation of a redeployment is very uh, let's say uh, efficient if you can do that, but a lot of environments uh, don't have that uh, let's say capability uh, in house, and it's nice if they if they can help themselves if if the need arrives. Mm. So it's not always uh, that easy for people to go into the DevOps mode on premises. Yeah. I might add something here. Um, this is not all. So we use the Windows agent backup to protect our S2D nodes our virtualization nodes because if you ever lose a machine or have uh, a disk problem there you can just restore it and you don't have to set up a new the host install a new windows system and so on and join into the cluster it's also of course a possibility and another thing you see here we back up the cluster so we also have all the cluster information and the backup can rejoin the host to the cluster if there is ever a problem right did you yep that's uh... so let's yeah, let's just peek into our, uh, uh, if the console is doing something. Well, it's still yeah. enumerating. It, that's, the, yeah. that's the drawback of S2D nodes. They have too many disks, right? Now. Yeah, true. <laughs> so that, okay. that's the part about the bare metal recovery. It's, uh, it's a nice feature to have. Uh, and uh, I would say if you are interested in it, play with it and test it out. Because you need to do some prep work. You also have to create recovery media to boot from. Uh, so you have the drivers uh, available that you need to to mount the disk. If you have a RAID controller, you have the network drivers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this this kind of restore is is one that you need to do some prep work for. But let's mm -hmm. go to another backup. Uh, as we as we told you, uh, let's do a file server or uh, our SQL server. Where is our SQL server here? Uh, here it is. Let's just kick that one off. It's going to be a fast one. Nothing changed much since the last backup. So we'll go and watch it. And then on Tarox S2D2, we should be able to watch the checkpoint being created. Mm -hmm. So last in the last webinar, you explained very well how the new backup uh, mechanism works in Hyper-V in 2016 and yeah. 2019. And now we want to see something of that, right? Yeah, the nice thing about the Veeam Backup and Replication Console is that they actually tell you very detailed what they do. So you have different backup vendors that say, oh, we're creating a backup. And uh, okay, that's fine, but what, what, what technology are you using? So Veeam will tell you it's creating a recovery checkpoint, the new checkpoints they created with 2016 and 2019 to do backups or replications. They will tell you that they are falling back to PowerShell Direct. They will tell you, all the little, let's say, details about what, about what's happening under the hood. If you don't want to know about it, if you don't care about it and everything is working, that's fine. But if you're troubleshooting something, that's sometimes very interesting because you can see, hey, why is this uh, thing not creating or acting as I expect it uh, uh, to behave? And then it gives you some pointers uh, how to troubleshoot this. Of course, live demos always take a bit, right? Maybe yeah, you can but, have a peek. That's peak. okay. It's preparing the snapshot, okay. so we're good. We're good. I'll give you a quick peek. No, nothing yet. Uh, okay. We'll go to Tadox here. We watch our SQL server we're backing up. It's, oh, that's not what I wanted. 
<laughs> okay, let us create a snapshot. And this is the annoying thing about live demos. You have to fill in the, the white spots between the actions. <laughs> and the next one we'll do, whilst this one is uh, You prepared. can just kick it, kick it, yeah. huh? We have the guest cluster that we will demo next, right? And yeah. that's, uh, that's also always interesting to look at. Uh, and I have some other jobs I already ran. So actually what I want to show you is probably already happening by now, I think. Let's see. SQL, yeah. Yeah, preparing to create, still preparing to create it, snapshot. It takes a bit, right? It's a bit too long to be normal, but okay, we, we stressed it a bit by brutally rebooting one of its nodes. <laughs> So maybe it's not uh, not too happy about that. Yeah. You can you can uh, do the PowerShell script in the background if you if it's always full screen. Yeah. You can talk on. about it later. You but you can also kick up another backup, right? Yes, we can. But I'm not sure it's, if it's going to be better. So what we could do is we could kick the file server, start yeah. it, see if that. We goes have a head that. start here. Okay. There shouldn't be a problem. Of course, one node is missing in the in the moment, but that yeah, but shouldn't prevent us from backing up the stuff, right? I would hope not. <laughs> so go back to the to the uh, rack machine so we can maybe see. It's, it's still booting. It was. It Man's last time it felt faster, right? Yes, that, that's because you were really waiting that eagerly for it. You know. <laughs> that's true. So oh, this is going fine, live backups, right? Okay. Okay. Meanwhile, while we're waiting for this, I will go to my Tarox and show you some scripts. And the scripts are related to the uh, guest uh, cluster backup. So normally when you get the get VM host cluster info. Uh, uh, did you, am I yes. allowed to just grab the mouse? Oh, grab the mouse. Go for Just it. for a moment, we can get rid of this and we do it a little bit smaller so we can maybe see the Hyper-V console. Okay. Not this one. So we okay. see if there's something happening, right? Dadox, yep. Yeah, this it is. So at least we do it here and then, sorry, you can now yep. use the rest of the screen and uh, talk about the script, okay? Okay, so Sorry for you, that. don't worry. What you see here for your cluster that the shared storage pod has been defined. If you have a brand new cluster and this doesn't exist, you need to create one. You need to define a shared storage pod on a CSV where the metadata around those uh, collection checkpoints. Oh, look, we have yeah. a Veeam recovery checkpoint. Finally, for some reason it was slow, but uh, Windows will tell you what it's doing. You will, you will see that it's Veeam that it's doing it. And if we go to Veeam PK, uh, here we are. You still, yeah. Yeah, you can see creating VM recovery checkpoint. So it indicates what type of checkpoint it's using. <clears throat> and that's the nice thing. And it will do the same thing for the file server. Actually, that file server test is almost done. That didn't yeah, have so much fun. faster, right? It didn't, that, oh, I had the, the SQL Server didn't have his cup of coffee in the morning, I guess. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so maybe we for, we uh, let's talk about what we see at the file server, and then we go to the much larger topic of guest cluster backup, right? Yeah. Because so, we are a little bit confused this morning. Well, we're not confused. It's a it's a live demo. It's like yeah. we're live, right? So you saw the the snapshot being created here. Then we selected a proxy just to make sure we can copy the data. They got the list of the guest file, and saving the configuration that they need to back up. They are grabbing the VMCX, the VMRS, and the VMGS, which are all the funky new files. And for people who know Windows a bit, having this one makes uh, introduces you to Windows Server 2019, right? That's uh, a little change. Uh, two hard disks, one for the OS and one with some files on there, truncating transactions lock if there are any, 
and actually it's already finalizing the backup so that went really fast of course we didn't add any data so the, the delta is humongously small and the source was the uh yeah the bottleneck which is mm -hmm. obvious because well <laughs> there was nothing to copy over the network almost <laughs> and there what could be the bottleneck? Well, the minimum data you had to read, all the waiting you had to do to, to create the backup, well, that was the bottleneck. Yeah. And we have network verification, no corrupted blocks so far, so this backup is happy. And it can be used for an instant recovery, which we, which we will also demo. Uh, the SQL Server is also finishing up, so we're all good here. So let's go back to our guest cluster topic. Uh, as we said, you have to set this path. Right. Don't forget this. If you don't, you ha don't have a place where to dump the metadata and you will have issues. If you actually look at it, uh, you will see that we created a special dedicated uh, small LAN for it. We created a folder and you will see some uh, fold subfolders being created and they will be filled with some uh, VMCX files. But normally it should remain pretty empty. Data goes in there and data gets cleaned out, right? It's during the, the checkpoints of the, of the group of the guest cluster nodes that this is happening. If this path for some reason has to change, you are out of luck because as you see, we have set the path, right? So as you might have noticed, I've created a little folder here to demonstrate that you might want to change the path to a new folder, it could be on a different LAN. Let's say you have a SAN and you want to replace the SAN, but you keep your clusters, but you have this set, then you have to make sure that you migrate uh, or create a new uh, LAN where you will set the either the path, to, the, the name of that LAN and the path exactly to what it was. So you will have a short time that it doesn't exist. Uh, but if you have if you have to rename the, the storage uh, path, then you have a problem because it's different and so you can't set it to something new. If you try this, that will complain. And this is by design. Microsoft says, well, we don't really need to do that. Well, I politely disagree. Uh, you actually do that a lot. I'm not one of those persons that normally throws away the storage with the servers or, or uh, things happen. Uh, sometimes you even need to reorganize your storage. Yeah, it's change the day layout and the size of your CSVs. Then you also have to rename them. Uh, and then this is something you have to take care of. So what I'm trying to do as a best practice to create a little dedicated LAN with nothing else than the metadata on there. Then during a migration, uh, I can throw it away and I can recreate it uh, with the same uh, name and the same exact path. And then I don't need to change the registry. Now, if that isn't possible, you will have to change it. Uh, and Microsoft has uh, can open a support call for that and I have a blog post on that and it's all manual but it's a bit tedious so what I did and I'll share this with you and we'll try this perhaps at the end of the of the the webinar uh, we will uh, turn it off so if you decided we're not going to use guest cluster backups on the host level anymore and we don't need it you can get rid of it the only problem with this is that it takes downtime uh, you have to edit the cluster database, which means that to uh, make the change effective, you have to shut down the cluster service on every node and restart it. So this is not something you can do uh, during office hours, unfortunately. Now, that is one thing you really need to do, but there is another thing, and that thing that is uh, very important because it has been the cause of lots of problems for a lot of people for a long, long time. Now. Uh, you have your hosts in your guest cluster. They have their dedicated local uh, disk with their operating system, right? But they also have the shared disk, the VHD set. And there is a, a pod where you put them, and that is shared between the, the nodes. And in our case, for this cluster, that's where it lives. It lives on this CSV, and this is the, the folder on the CSV. And we can show you this one here. What was it? S2D2, I think. Two, yeah. So here is my VHDS with my AVHX and my change blocking, uh, my change block tracking files. So that's good. Now, what was the problem is? Uh, so the problem wait, wait, wait a moment. Um, for the viewers who don't know what a guest cluster is or what the problems with a guest cluster is. 
Uh, imagine you put a high available file server in virtual machines. That was what, what we did. So the data of the high available file server normally lives in a LAN or in a, in a SAN environment. And if you want to emulate that in, in virtual machines, you need a storage that all the uh, uh, cluster nodes can use. Um, and uh, directly um, it's open in every, in every uh, VM. So it's not a virtual disk that is attached attached to one VM. It's a virtual disk that is attached to multiple VMs so that they can use that. And, and it's what, basically virtually shared storage, right? Virtual exactly. Shared. And uh, it has to be on a cluster volume or on an um, SMB3 share in a cluster, right? But, but a high available one, a soft one, right? Uh, yeah. Exactly. And this is here the virtual disk. It's not a VHDX, it's a VHDS for a cluster set. And here the data lives. And that is that is what Didier is showing here. Okay? Yeah. The thing the thing that the problem here is the permissions on this share do not include rights for all the guest members. So you need to correct this. Now you, there is a white paper or, or a, an article from Microsoft on this, but you have to do it manually there. So what we did is we just grabbed the name of the guest cluster, then we grabbed the host cluster's name, we give it the path where we want to set the permission, and then this little PowerShell script just grabs all the guest cluster nodes, enumerates through them, it grabs its uh, the grid, the identifier of that uh, guest node, and then it creates uh, an iCall Ex, uh, string that you will execute by a command.exe and it will just fix the permissions for you. So if you run this, it's found it's it's found two uh, nodes, so cluster node one and cluster node two. It has the grid and it takes that grid to grant the permissions to the mm -hmm. share where that VHD set lives. And this is paramount. If you do not do this, this will cause all those issues with checkpoints never merging, only merging if you shut them down, because then one machine uh, that's created the VHD, uh, sorry, the, the checkpoints has rights on those, the other one doesn't. So there's all kinds of scenarios that you can run into. They, they Sometimes they merge, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just build up and build up and you get dozens or even hundreds of them. That depends on how, how fast you see it. Uh, cleaning that up manually is uh, highly unrecommended. We've discussed it in a previous webinar, but let's say if you want to do host level guest cluster backups, these two little uh, things are the ones that you need to, to watch out for. So make sure you have your shared storage pod set and make sure you run a script or you do it manually and set the permissions on that uh, uh, share, uh, that part where you have your shared uh, storage. So that's what you need to do. And the so scripts are available on your blog. You see yes. the link up there. It's uh, HTTPS uh, uh, slash, uh, how do you call it, uh, whack, whack, block dot working hard in it dot yeah. work. Just okay. Google for guest clusters and, and you'll find plenty of that. Okay, we have to go on, DDA, because yeah. we are already yeah. half an hour in it. So do you yeah. want to back up this thing? And first yeah. we have to look at the console again, maybe. Huh? Okay, you can you can have a look at your console. You're ready? Ah, yeah. So, so we have to switch to that. Yeah, kick it off. of time issues. Why me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, because you want to do something as well? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I want to do something as well. Otherwise, I would just mute you and... You know, <laughs> <laughs> you would just mute me. That's good. So um, we have started the ISO, the agent. It's running, uh, uh, or we booted our Tarox S2D4 node uh, into the ISO. So uh, and now we, it wants to have the 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 data path. Where is the backup? And the backup, of course, is not on a local USB drive or so. It's on the network. So we want to connect to our Veeam backup server and uh, restore the data from there. So we have different possibilities with the agent. Of course, we can uh, we can uh, connect it to a share, to a backup repository, to a um, Cloud Connect repository, and to Microsoft OneDrive. I have never tested the last one. That, <laughs> to be that's, honest, that's, that was more <laughs> the idea to do that for uh, a laptop. Exactly, and but it, that, but it is maybe a bit slow, right? Yeah, so and, then, and some people don't have that much space on their OneDrive, so that's also something to watch out for. 
So he's we'll now see. just entering the backup server to get to the repository. And now the tricky part. Oh. Okay. Let me type it here and try to paste it. I, right. I take full blame for that. I, I have problems with German keyboard layouts, so I tend to use the US English QWERTY and then I make Let's life hard for the parser. No, I can't paste it. Damn shall it. I, shall I help you with that if you if you yes, need? Yes, please. Our course. Can I can I say it, can I set it to English? <laughs> yes, you can. Please do it. <laughs> Uh, course, what's an backslash. backslash admin cr, right? Yes, and now I try the password. That's the yes. problem here. But you can you can, you can look at it, but it's no, not. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you could type it in on another screen and then paste it in, but I can't it from here. <laughs> I can't okay. do it. So it's connecting to the backup server where we'll grab uh, the the backup from the from the repository. So I don't know if the password is correct, by the way. Well, we'll we'll find out soon. Yeah, we will find out soon. So uh, let's talk about it a bit. What what's happening uh, um, uh, after that? So we we have to choose where to restore the. The data too, and there is a mechanism in the in the recovery agent to find out itself. But unfortunately, or not unfortunately, we have a lot of disks here, so it has sometimes some trouble to find the right disk to where the data is stored. So we have to give well, him some help. And, and, and of also, course, we, we need to load yeah, the RAID the RAID controller yeah, driver as well. Sometimes we have to uh, load some drivers. The drivers are all in the image, but uh, with this host, it doesn't find them, them themselves, so we have to select it. So that, okay. that was nice, we just found it. So we have two, uh, two agent backups here, and of course we want to restore one of the Tarok servers, not one of the other ones. That's and the correct one. That's here the is the four, yeah. yes, we yeah. want that. Let, let's let's emphasize that this is important, correct? Yeah. <laughs> we start the correct uh, one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because of the AD and so on, right? So yes. we did a backup. We could choose mul from multiples if we had multiples, and the last one didn't work, but usually you want the last one. So and then we have the possibility to use the entire computer, but to spare time, we have to use the manual restore because there is some... Uh, some challenges with the disk. So here we see the C drive and all the boot partitions are backed up and we also have a backup of the cluster performance history disk because that's not a CSV. Uh, did you mention CSV? You can't. CSVs you can't uh, back up with, uh, um, really? with the agent um, but normal cluster disk we can. Let's see here the first we go to the driver yeah. What you're seeing right here are all the SSDs and uh, and the NVMEs of the uh, that are not attached via the RAID controller. So here we see the RAID controller uh, needs the A driver. driver. It's it's everything is there in the image, but it, uh, for some reason it doesn't load it automatically. That takes a bit. And okay. We've got success. We've got success. We go to OK. I don't know if we have to refresh. Scroll down. Let's see. Scroll Let's down. see. Yeah, it's the, the interface is a bit. Yeah, it's there. Here so, it is. So yeah. it already matched it. Yeah, click I OK. Think. I think so. Yeah. And then we go to next. So you want to so you want to do the cluster performance disk or not? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Okay. The cluster is still running, and yep. uh, I don't want to do that. So we click on restore, and thumbs pressed. Okay. It should work very nicely. So it will uh, it will restore the C drive with all the boot information, and uh, we come back here um, and uh, see how it how it went afterwards because it's this of course takes some time so okay, okay. Did they go back to the so i'm going to kick off this guest cluster backup in 
the knowledge that if I've done my homework correctly, you should not have issues with your guest cluster backup. Audio so. gone. Uh, can you? Uh, someone said uh, uh, audio is gone. Uh, still checking. Can you hear us? I'm not muted, as far as I know. No, you're not. Um, local problem. Okay, audio is fine. Go on. Okay. Good, so this is running, so we'll come back to this pretty soon, but whilst we are waiting for it to initialize, uh, let's look at what we have here in V10. We have something like file shares. You can add a file share on a NAS, you can add a Windows file server, and this is actually our uh, virtual machine files with the file server, and we can back those up uh, without having to, do, uh, to go over a, a cluster. Uh, an unhost backup of our cluster. So you could add your uh, cluster role, your file share cluster role here, and point to to the data, just like mm -hmm. you do for for a, a NAS file share. So you have multiple options now of backing up that data. Yeah. And uh, I think this is the, the important part here is if you, for example, have a, let's say, an enterprise NAS, NAS is maybe not the right word, but an enterprise a storage with uh, uh, SIF shares, like for example, a NetApp, you can now back up that NetApp with uh, with this option. Yeah. yeah, so you can add a file server. Which even is NFS. Web... Yeah, so you can add a server, you can add an NFS share and an SMB share. So if you have a NAS device like where you don't have an OS you control, this is the option you would use. Okay. So this is, this is new in V10, but let's go back to our running backup. So where are we at? preparing to create snapshots. So now it could become very interesting because we want to look at our guest nodes. And here we should see that snapshot being created as a collection snapshot. And then it also pays to take uh, a bit of an interest in what's happening over here, if any data is appearing here, right? So. We have to, to wait for that, but maybe because time is running out, we have only 24 minutes to the hour. Yes. You can also start a, um, an instant recovery or a, a, of a backup, for example, our file server or ex our... Ex excellent idea, actually. So, yeah. but let's first go here quickly and no, see. No, it's not. Not yet. Okay. So... We go to Veeam again, and we say, uh, we go home, sorry, and we go restore, and I say Microsoft Hyper-V, restore from backup, I want to restore the entire VM, I want to do an instant recovery, so now I need to find a machine, oh, let's see what, it, oh, yeah, I already had it, too impatient, let's grab it. Yeah, so looking good. Points in time, we don't, we have a couple, I think. We'll take the, the, latest. We the latest one, why not? Yeah. Okay. The incremental, yeah. We say restore to the original location, that's fine. Yeah, we don't want to do that, but you can scan the machines for malware if you are restoring after an incident. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, can explicit, uh, send, send, give it a reason, but let's not do this here. Let's let us verify the VM quickly. I will go and take a peek. Something is happening here with my other no. backup. Oh. Oh, it wants it, it, the backup was running on S2D4. This is hilarious. <laughs> so restore it to another <laughs> node. Come on, go back. <laughs> okay, this is funny. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> so, so let's let's do. What do you think? No, it's right? S2D3, right? Yeah. So let's see what's happening here. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> that was kind of funny. So you see, we didn't plan. Okay, we have the Hyper-V switch. We'll we'll take it. We'll preserve the ID. That's okay. No, you don't. Scan no, we the don't machine. want to do that. We don't. But the machine reason. is still there, my friend. Ah. Uh, why why does it want to do something with S two D four? So we have maybe to wait until uh, the until the node is up and running again. Apparently, but okay. okay. 
Yeah, and th that's, that. then we have an annoying thing. This is a modal form, so we have to quit. Oh. We have a problem. Yes, we have. I see it. Why? Why, yeah. why, why? Let's quickly... Okay, so this is life. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. But in two ways. It's a live show and this is live like shit happens, right? Ah, uh, so let's see what we see here. What could be the problem? The recovery. You messed with uh, permissions, but I don't know. No, I, I, just, I, just, I just made sure that they, I, I re-ran it, but. Yeah, you re-ran it. That's, that, that's okay, that shouldn't be the problem. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's let's just go back to the bare metal restore, uh, and if it's already finished, and then we can start up the node, and maybe something is there because of the S2D cluster, right? Updating the driver, so yeah, it should be done. Nearly done. Um, nearly done. That's good. I will see. Do you know where the where the SQL Server VM was running? We can try an instant recovery. I of think that one. on one and two, or one or two. Yeah. It's still running there. Have a look. Uh, Tarox one. Oh. Tarox one. Look in the cluster or look there. Yeah. Okay. Server is still there. Okay. Let's see if this one gives us a better chance of doing the instant recovery. SQL, SQL, where is it? Here it is. Instant okay. recovery. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Uh, Microsoft Hyper-V from backup, entire Time VM, VM, instant recovery, of course. What was it called? SQL. SQL. VM backup. Uh, oh, there. VM. VM. Come on. But that it's the name of the V. B, B, then B, B. No, 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 no. Ah, you had a different name. The name, the name of the VM. Start with SQL. Yeah, there it is. Yes, there we go. We stored the original location. Yes. No, no reason. Just because we want to show it. No. I'm it's afraid. All to ter it's Terox S2D4. We, f we first need the node, I guess. So uh, it back. looks like that. Yeah. Go uh, back. Maybe, maybe. It's, maybe it's RC1. Maybe, yeah. But no, 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 no. Maybe it's, a, it's in, in general a very bad idea to try a restore to a cluster that has a node being recovered. Talking so, of which. Yeah. Restore process finish. is finished. So we just reboot the node. And then we quickly try to do the restore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So it should it should take another two to three minutes to boot. Yeah. Meanwhile, my guest cluster should be about to give up, I guess. Now, is it going to continue? Maybe. Looks that way. Yes. So it's just complaining, but it's not failing, it seems. Okay, that's also interesting. <laughs> Since it's good to know. Yeah. Now, what it will do is it will actually uh, grab the, the, the configuration of that virtual machine, mount it on the machine where you're restoring it. That could be an, an, an alternate one. And it will then create a check checkpoint, and then all the new, the machine will become available, and all the new writes will be going to that checkpoint. But you will actually read existing data from your backup storage, so that's yeah. why your backup storage is preferably a bit more performant than than the the the, the slowest disk you can find. Yeah. Uh, and once that has happened, you can uh, migrate it to production. So if you look here at the log, it will say, "Look, uh, I restored the configuration." I grabbed the disk, I mounted it, I created a snapshot, the VM starts, and it is available now already, so that's okay. But that's now a nice thing, yeah. It's very nice, so that's fast, but actually the VM hasn't been 
totally restored yet to the location where you need it to be. And it says, I'm waiting for user interaction, which is true because here, in instant recovery, it's mounted, it's running. You can say migrate to production, and then it will just, with storage live migration, will put the machine where it needs to be and add it to the cluster again. Because right now, if you go to the Tarox, uh, it's here on Tarox 1, but if you look at the cluster, uh, it's gone. So what we do now is we go and say migrate to production. And this takes a while, depending on the speed of your source and your target, your network bandwidth. Uh, ideally, you leverage your yeah. uh, dedicated backup network for this. If Can you, you show one. it in the file system? So that we uh, have a checkpoint there and uh, on the yes. Tarox. Yes, the Tarox one. So let's go. <laughs> where do you want to go here on the file system, you mean? Yeah, where the SQL server is. Where is it? It's on Where the first one? one, I think. It's on the first one normally. Yeah, there's a SQL server, so it should have a checkpoint. There's a checkpoint. Yes. And you also, at the moment this finalizes. No. Yeah, the, the moment, the moment, it's a future tense, right? It <laughs> yes, finalizes. It is. You will see it appear back into the cluster. Okay, cool. And let's take a look what network it is using. So in this case, it's going over, uh, where are we here? So it's using our preferred backup network, so that's good. Okay, so let's have a look back to the console. You're golden. Oh, the machine is there. That's good. Yes. So if so, you go to Tarox 1, let me just show. Okay. So if we go to a PowerShell. And we do a get storage job. That is very important with storage basis direct and it's not get as set. Maybe you can type a minus for me, my friend. <laughs> Fantastic. And enter. I do it. So we see now because the fourth S2D node just booted up from the restore, it's joined the cluster and everything is fine, but we have some repair jobs going on. And um, don't do anything with the cluster with another node before the repair jobs are finished. And of course, you see them now also in Windows Admin Center, so you don't have to know get storage job to see them. And uh, if we repeat it, we see there is an and uh, progress, uh, the jobs are going on you, um, and they are finished very soon because we don't have too much I.O. on the cluster. See here, um, five are already completed. And if we go, get to a word, ah, damn it. Where is the minus? Can I, uh, virtual disk. We see that the disks that are still in, in service are not uh, not completely healthy, they are in warning, but they will be very soon. I just wanted to add that because um, it's important for S2D. It's not really important for backup or restore, but it's important here. So Didier, go on with our bare metal, uh, oh no, with our instant recovery, right? It was here, it's restoring. Okay, we will come maybe back to this. Are you moved, my friend? Did you fall on your microphone? I'm muted, of course. Yes, that yes, happens. Okay. <laughs> the, the, button, the button for this mute button is on the, the worst possible location. Okay. Uh, so uh, maybe we finish up with the uh, with the guest cluster, right? You wanted to yeah, show something. Well, yeah. well, unfortunately, it is yes. <laughs> not working. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to show about the guest cluster is to. Uh, change or get rid of that shared storage pod, which would mean I will bring down all nodes. So this is not the moment to do that, right? <laughs> okay. Here's, here's, not during an instant recovery. That would be shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, now we need to figure out why this went wrong, because we did this yesterday and this morning, and it all went fine. And for some new reason, now it doesn't anymore, which is unfortunately a bit of an experience I've seen too often with the host level backups of guest clusters. Uh, which I, which makes me quite happy. I now have this uh, file sharing capability. 
<laughs> yeah, so the, the question would be, uh, DDA, uh, could it be that uh, we had one node missing of the cluster? So that's, that's the reason why we maybe have a problem? It could be. Normal, normally, of course, everything has to be online in the guest cluster, but yeah. uh, we can we can always try You have it another again. one, right? You have yeah, another it, one prepared. Yeah, don't have a backup job for it, but I yeah. Know. But we can we can show it the people instead of waiting here. Uh, yeah. This is finished and uh, so guests. We're new with guest two, I guess. Cluster yeah. two. That do guest cluster two. Yeah. two. So you you can show oh. how to set it up. So next, so we're gonna add some virtual machines on our Tyrox cluster. This innovation takes a while. Meanwhile, I'm gonna have a peek here. Let's first can close this. As we this one is finished. That's good. Nothing happening anymore. Uh, and our restore is still going on. Of well, course. No, it's almost done. I think probably. Let's see. Okay, we're here, so we make node A and node B. Those are our two guest nodes. That's what we need. In the storage, we're gonna put them on our sober. That's all good. Advanced, yeah, that's all we want. That's what we do. Maintenance, yes, we don't create synthetic folds. Next, guest processing, of course we do. That's Karsten here in the lab. No, and yes, finish. Ah, look, our instant recovery is done. So that yeah. means if we look here on the cluster, we should have our SQL server back. Mm, now, yeah. the, thing to, the, the thing to remember is that the moment it has mounted the disk, taken the snapshot, it becomes available for your users. So restoring everything as it should be uh, happens in the back end, right? Mm. So that's so uh, I can yeah just just a reminder we do the question and answers after the demo so if you have questions you can already type them in the question section and of course we will go over 60 minutes with the questions so please type them and we will ask them afterwards yeah i i, I have some spare time so it's okay yeah. <laughs> me too Okay, it's so called, now it's called, the, it's called the lunch break, right? Yeah. So this was very fast. You set up. Yeah. Did you do the the ackling correctly before? I, I already did that. Yeah. Okay. So um, this should work, right? This should work, but the other um, one should have worked. It's, the it's other the one first, should have. It's the, the first should... backup of this one. You can kick off another uh, of the first one, or is it a problem to do do no. two guest clusters in no. parallel? No, no, no. So maybe no. do an active full. Let's see what happens. Yeah. The first is an act, the, the, the cluster two is an active full because we didn't back up it before. Yeah. And the cluster one is an um, um, an incremental. Yeah. This. So I'm curious what this will say. If it now works, maybe it was due to the to one of the nodes being offline. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I hope. But, so but in, gen I in general... I have to for yeah. one minute, yeah? Okay, um, yeah. Um, Don't worry. So I, I will keep you all occupied and happy. So let's move a bit between those. Preparing to create snapshot, which means that we should start seeing things in Hyper-V Manager. So... Oh, now we see another cool feature of uh, Veeam. If they don't have uh, proper network access to the guest, to do the guest interaction, it will fall back to PowerShell Direct, which is pretty nifty. I kind of like this. Oh, we are creating recovery checkpoints, which is great. So let's have a look. Yeah, the Hyper-V collection, you can see it's a, it's a different type. It's not a it's a recovery, but it's for a group of uh, virtual machines in that guest cluster. So it's a collection, and with some luck, 
you can see some action happening here from that so I'm back activity right so this is kind of cool you can see this here happening so this should be cleaned out should be cleaned up if you have a lots of entries here something is wrong because then something is happening uh, is going wrong with your with your backup so let's take a look again at the Veeam console. So this is starting to back up. So this is working for the moment. And this one, preparing to create snapshot. So this guest cluster backup is going well. And we will see if this one goes okay now as well. And then I, if, if this goes okay now, well, I have to do some more testing, but I might have an extra attention point to add to my presentation. Don't try to do backups while you're restoring <laughs> nodes of your cluster or something. Yeah. We can we can we can try it afterwards again and see if it's the same problem. So it's both are working, huh? Uh, well, I'm not I'm not. I'm not happy about this one yet. It's preparing to create snapshots, yeah. and we'll see if it continues. If it hangs here, you know something is going to go wrong. But this one is doing its job properly. Yeah. Yes. Yes, looking promising. Let's take a look at our oh, Hyper-V manager, of course. Over here, you can see them. It has been created. And here, no. No. What do you mean with no? It's, it's still not uh, working. The first one. Yep. And the second so, one? The second one is doing just fine. So we have maybe a little problem here with uh, uh, increment. The backup of a guest cluster. Right? No, it's it's don't think it's related to the fact that it's incremental. Yeah, then I click am, off the form. Yes, but I'm not gonna cancel it because cancelling takes too long. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, we are we are near the hour. Um did we miss something we wanted to show? We we showed the bare metal restore setup. Um um or the bare metal restore the setup you talked about a bit yeah then, we, uh, we that was an inventory remember with the protection yeah, groups yeah. we backed up a sql server vm and the file server vm and yep. with the sql server you showed the instant uh, recovery option we didn't show that you can use the vm uh, when it's uh, when it started and the data no. is still on the backup but you uh, can the backup you can target. ping it you can rdp it yeah. your, your your customers can connect to it it's pretty nice so we saw the recovery checkpoints uh, when we did the restore. Uh, you showed uh, the collection checkpoint. Did you yeah, show that? You, you, I think you can you can still see it by the way uh, if yeah. you go to these nodes, right? Hyper-V collection. Yeah. And we also mentioned that you can see the data, the metadata being added to the to the shared storage pod. Mm -hmm. This is why this shared storage pod must exist and. Uh, otherwise, you will run into issues. And the other one, if you if you look at, uh, for example, uh, the guest nodes or the cluster. So what you see here is, let's take it here, properties, security, and you go for advanced. These are the grids of the two virtual machines that we added via the yeah. little script with the correct yeah, the permissions. Virtual machines that so, are building the guest cluster. Right? So this also has to be done to to make sure that they, they both have the, the permissions they need on that shared storage, on that VHD set, on those snapshots to be able to merge them properly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. So this. So is, and then, yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. Then you sh you showed a bit about the shared storage path and how to set up and fix uh, the, yeah, the backup of the that's, shared. Yeah, that's that's the the thing. We have the script here, but it will take down your your cluster, right? Yeah. Okay. So we don't do that. And uh, uh, for all to remember, uh, this is uh, we had to choose a backup software to show you backup of Hyper-V. And we know that not all of this stuff is available in other backup solutions. Uh, uh, 
Uh, but we are also Veeam Vanguard, so our preferred backup product so far is uh, Veeam. There are others out there that are maybe as good as uh, Veeam is, but we both know Veeam best, right, Didier? Yes. And so um, please go and to it, the... And, and it is the only backup software I know of that has functionality to the host level guest cluster backups which VHD sets. Yeah, so I have an announcement still to do and after the announcement we will go back to the Q&A and uh, we can also show that. So please go to the to the next slide. Um, I want to emphasize today is the last day of the 100 euro early bird ticket for this Cloud and Data Center Conference 2020. It will take place and at the 13th and 14th of May in Hanau again. We have again over 70 uh, presentations and on the 12th of May we have the Hyper-V and Hybrid Cloud Community uh, that's free. The conference is not free but the community is free also happening in, in Hano in the, um, in the conference center. And we have some nice speakers aligned already. Didier is one of them and uh, I will uh, tweet and uh, talk about the speakers very soon on Twitter. Um, I'm also talking with some people from the product group in Redmond and I have already one confirmed, maybe two confirmed speakers from Redmond. You will hear, hear about them very soon. So if you are interested in the conference, uh, buy your ticket today because it's still 100 uh, deducted by 100 euros. Of course, you can buy it afterwards and uh, it is a bit more expensive, but it will not kill you. It's 4.99 from tomorrow. Today it's 3.99. So now we move on to the Q&A part, right? Okay. And you, you maybe recognize I didn't announce the next webinar. I first have to find a, a date and it will be in the follow-up mail where you get the, the link to the recording. So I have some questions here in the, in the um, question area. Yeah. And did you, you see it too, I assume? I'm not seeing anything yet. Uh, let uh, me you see. have to open your question part. Yes, I'm trying to oh. find it. So the first question is uh, uh, first from Stefan. He asks, oh, wait, there's another one before that. Stefan, uh, so hi guys, uh, will there be a recording? Yes, there will be a recording. Um, Patrick, no, we didn't sacrifice a VM because we can get it back and we didn't sacrifice the host because we restored it. Uh, but there's also in demos, there's also the possibility that you sacrifice something. So uh, Stefan asks, but these scripts are only required when using shared disk in a guest cluster, not when using SQL AAG uh, guest cluster. So, that is correct. Uh, it, it, has is to correct. Be, it has to be about VHD sets and yeah. only for host level backups. So if you back, up, if you back them up, via Windows uh, Veeam agent for Windows inside of the guest, uh, that should work as long as it's not a CSV or in V10 if you use the, the file share uh, capabilities, you don't need it. But if you are going to try and do host level backups of your guest cluster, you really need to set those permissions correctly and add that shared storage part. Yeah. Now you will notice, I, I, I don't know if it changes in V10, but in V9 of Veeam, if you add, uh, uh, a backup job, or no, if you add a cluster to to the uh, to the infrastructure of a Veeam environment, it will say, "Hey, you added a cluster. If you if you if you want to take backups of a of a guest cluster, you need to add the shared storage pod." Mm -hmm. So I've seen a lot of people adding that pod and actually not needing it because they're not doing guest cluster backups on the on the with VHD set uh, on the host but then afterwards that pod disappears and then their live migration migrations fails because that pod isn't there if that little registry key and uh, or that little entry has been made into the cluster database it has to exist that pod or you will see funky stuff that has nothing to do with guest cluster backups but still it will uh, create hiccups right yeah. And you have blog posts about that on, on and, and all and all the scripts and with yeah. a disclaimer, try it out in your lab first before you run any of that stuff on your production. If you have a lab. So next question is: After the bare metal restore of the node, how did the S2D system react on it? Did it recognize the present slabs on the restored node, or was was it a full repair recovery? I missed that in the demo. So I will answer that, Peter. Um, 
the slabs are still known and the disks are still known to the S2D cluster and the node is also known. So we don't have to repair the full node. It's only the data that couldn't be written when the node was down. So uh, the VMs are working there. Some of the slabs or extends, how you can call it, are on the fourth node and it's not available. And then it, um, it, they are marked um, that they have to be copied over to the first node when it's available again. That, so that also happens if you reboot a node, if a, uh, a node crashes. Uh, it's the same happened here with, uh, with the resource. So no yeah. full recovery. That would be impossible in that time. And of course, it would be, it would be interesting that you restore a backup that's very recent. I don't go back three weeks or, or yeah. three weeks. Oh, and then there is an answer, yeah. uh, the, a question for Didier. Uh, uh, also from Peter, any plans for the future to back up the S2D subsystem stuff, slabs, and so on with Veeam? So I will answer that too because I'm I'm the S2D expert a bit more than Didier, right, Didier? You are, That's correct. Yeah. So I have no information about that. I don't think so, but everything is possible with Veeam. But what would be the advantage to back up uh, the extents or the slabs in the subsystem? We are backing up VHDXs and so on. And that's important data. It doesn't depend on what it's live, in my opinion, Didier? Yeah, I, I'm just wondering about the use case. What, what, what's your need yeah. here? Is, yeah. is, so Peter, if you're still there and you want to elaborate on that, please uh, type uh, type additional uh, questions here. So then Oliver asks a very long one. Uh, I tried to read it or I, I read it. We uh, consistently have problems with Hyper-V replica and or Hyper-V host-based backup in nearly 100% of all virtual primary domain controllers. So primary domain controllers, they are you mean, virtual... You, you... You mean the domain controllers with the PDC role? Is that what he means? I think he means that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the the question goes on. The MS replica or backup, even the native MS server backup, runs for a few days, weeks, but then it freezes. Often the PDC stops completely or the backup is no longer possible. If it starts a few minutes earlier with an event and then he gets gets gives us more information about the events. I will not read that. Often even the Hyper-V service freeze only uh, for the PDC. All, all other VMs continue to run inconspicuously. The Hyper-V host can no longer be shut down. It loops for hours when the Hyper-V service are stopped. It only affects PDCs, diff, uh, different servers with DAS or NAS, ZAN storage, no cluster. That can be... What can be the cause here? So Have you any it's, idea? It's, it depends on the version of uh, of uh, the Hyper-V cluster and of the, the VM guest where the PDC is running in. I might have an idea. There have been some issues in the past, but for example, I have multiple environments where all my domain controllers are virtualized, and yeah. I have not not yet run into that issue. Not with with V9, 9.5, uh, 2016, 2019. So yeah, he had it. He had it also with other backup software, even with the built-in software. So um, so maybe I can, maybe I can maybe, also maybe tell you. Yeah, I, uh, the VM is a problem here. I would assume because we have also all virtual, uh, all domain controllers are virtual in our environment, and I have uh, many other environments as customers where where it's the same case. Usually, there are no problems with backup here. Yeah, so it should be something with your machine. Maybe you move the PC role to another node and try what's happening there. Yeah, maybe create a brand new domain controller, move the roles over and uh, decommission that old one. Maybe that solves the problem. Yeah. Okay, then the next question from Peter. If you did the bare metal restore to a new machine because the, the original server died for resync, um, so Peter is asking uh, if the machine is gone, it burned, for example. So we have yeah. our uh, our backup, the machine burned, and it is an S2D node with disks in there, and the disks burned too. Then, of course, when we restore the machine, uh, we have to have new disks there, the yeah. same or newer ones, and then the cluster has to rebuild all the extents or slabs to the new disks. 
Yep. If only the host uh, uh, dies, so for example, the motherboard dies, uh, you get a new motherboard or whatever, but your storage disks are still, or devices are still containing the data, you can save them and put them in the new node, they will, will be not a completely resync because Storage Basis Direct knows the disks and recognize them by the serial number and so on and knows what uh, extents are on there. That at least is my experience. Didier, do you want to add? No, I think, yeah. Uh, the only issues you could run into with a new server is that you will need to add some drivers extra, load some drivers, because if it's a brand new model with different hardware, different rate, control, uh, different uh, HBA, uh, you might have some issues there. Yeah. So, uh, Peter, who was uh, asking the question about the uh, S2D subsystem stops, slaps, and so on, uh, said, uh, uh, then I don't need to back up the VHDX and so on. Peter, maybe that that are smilings behind the on that are these these uh, these ah, uh, roofers. <laughs> yeah, but uh, then you lose, for example, the consistency. So we can when when it does the the checkpoint, it also uh, does a VSS snapshot in the VM, so you get a consistent VM. And with the slaps, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. So, so you he would he would like to do some sort of a of a storage or of a of a storage based uh, data protection mechanism that that the backup software gets the uh, the information out of the yeah. out of the slaps directly instead of going via the guest. Yeah. But that, said, that, that added, all, yeah. Yeah. He added strange use case. I know. I was just curious if it's possible in general. We would think it's possible in general, <laughs> but Te technically it's possible. But it almost sounds like you could you could compare it with doing a, a hardware snapshot on a SAN yeah. and just copying the data out of there. But then it's always crash consistent. Yeah, and he said uh, yes, it is a smiley. He added. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have we we come to the end of the questions. So this is your chance to add additional or ask additional questions if you want to. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Otherwise, I, see, uh, <laughs> I always tell people I, I don't don't f never feel afraid to come over as an idiot. We are the idiots here, putting our stupidity online, making <laughs> webcasts and webinars about it. So uh, we, we've got that covered, right? <laughs> yeah, we get that covered. Yeah. So if you have still questions, please type them in. They can even be asked in German. I try my best to translate them to English so Didier understands them and he he understands German. So if you are a bit shy because questions in English, ask them in German, it's it's fine. I have another one from Stefan. Is it supported to backup SQL AGGs via host level backup and then to, and what to consider? So I have to pass this over to you, Didier. I'm not a SQL guy. Yeah, it should be possible. I don't, I don't see it. Unless, unless, of course, you do funky stuff where you combine AGs with shared storage, which is sort of possible, but it's a bit of a weird use case. So as long as, as if it's a pure AG with nothing yeah. shared, it's it's okay. You should be able to do that. I I would say the same. Yeah, I would say the same. Uh, you sh it should be possible. Yeah. Um, so another question, if you want to, please feel free to type, even German. And if not, um, I start thanking Didier. That was a pleasure again with my Hyper-V Amigo to do something together. It was a little bit stressful, especially for Didier. Uh, he prepared all the all the uh, the backup stuff, and we have more <laughs> here. We have even uh, we use a Synology here as an iSCSI target in yeah, our let, test let environment. Me, let, let me show yeah. that actually. Let Go me, back let to me. it with ReFS because no. ReFS is. A bit better than NTFS for backup, and there is a new fix out, uh, fix for ReFS out in the wild with the last uh, last update. So Microsoft is also fixing some problems in ReFS. If you didn't know that, so great yeah. stuff. And we even have a Wasabi account. Wasabi is an S3 uh, compatible storage in the cloud that is much cheaper than Azure and AWS. They do only cloud, so we wanted to talk about that, but there is no time for that. So, Didier, hopefully we can do a Hyper-V showcast about that. Well, I was, as you can see, we have a Wasabi tier that we can use yeah. uh, directly in Veeam. We're also playing with the Wasabi tier in 
the Starwind. In the, the Starwind VTL, we have the virtual tape library yeah. here. That's oh. also great stuff. We oh, will sure. talk about that in the next uh, Hyper-V Amigo showcast, right? Yeah, so all these things are, are up and coming in, in, in new uh, showcasts, in blog posts. It's going to be a very busy year with V10 being out now. Uh, and you probably all know that ransomware is not diminishing, but ever increasing. And we are seeing a bit of a panic right here in Belgium, because we had quite a few, uh, a few of uh, cases that were where in, entire industrial companies were shut down, where entire cities had to go back to the typewriter for a week or more. So we're, we're in a bit we're in a bit of a re-awareness mode around the, the 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 dangers around ransomware. Yeah. So to to give you again the the URL you should look for, please open a Notepad and type it DD so that they can oh, see it. I will I will <laughs> grab Notepad for you. Okay. A new one, please. A new one, please. Where Here is you go. It? So go ahead. It's, so I do it, HTTPS. So uh, imagine an HTTPS here. It's high, no, it's a German one, hyper v amigos.net. And add an HTTPS uh, colon double slash and you are there. We have recorded, I think, about 19 or 20 showcasts so far. 21. Um, uh, how much? 21, okay. 21. <laughs> Most of them are about the cool Hyper-V and failover cluster stuff, uh, also S2D stuff, backup, uh, how you do benchmarking and so on. And we will continue our backup-focused uh, Hyper-V Amigo showcast with the great stuff we have here. And so with that, I would say um, thank you all for attending the webinar. Um, there, are, there were nearly 100 or a bit of over 100 people live in the webinar and you will get a link to the recording in the next days and then you can click in it because it was a bit confused because it was live um, but I think it was great uh, we showed everything we wanted. Didier last words to you? Yeah it was fun doing and I hope one day I can do a demo with guest cluster backups where everything <laughs> goes well. <laughs> where everything is green. <laughs> okay. Yes, one, one day that's my dream. Right. Okay, thank you very much and uh, have a nice rest of the Friday and a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.